On this tutorial, we will do Norton's theorem. So what this theorem says is that if you have a complex circuit like this one, you can simplify it to this circuit. Like you can just connect amp meter, Norton resistance in parallel as you see in parallel and then to your circuit look for a load resistor then take that load resistor and connect it also in parallel with these two so on this case our load resistor is R2. So if we say this is R2, that one is R1, R3. So this makes our load resistor R2. But now, how do we calculate Norton's current and how do we calculate Norton's resistance? So to calculate, to calculate, um, Norton's current and Norton's resistance, there are few things to consider. When we are calculating Norton's current, when we calculate this current, what we will do to this circuit, we will remove the load resistor and then make a short there. When we make that short here, what will happen is um, we will have two circuits, this circuit on this side and this circuit on this side. So once we short here, to calculate the current across this resistor, we will use only this voltage. And to calculate a current across that resistor, we will use only this voltage. So this, make, this makes a current over the 4 ohm resistor or R1 equal to 24 divided by 4. And a current across R3 is 18 divided by 6. So once we get this current and this current with a shot here, if we want, if we, we, we were to measure a current here, it will be the sum of these currents that we'll get here. If we say this one is I2 and this one is I1, so a current across here would be I1 plus I2. So a sum of these currents will equal to Norton's current. So once we get Norton's current, we are left with Norton's, Norton's resistance. So to get Norton's resistance, again, we come to our original circuit. The law says we must short the cells. So once we short these cells, um, when these cells are shorted, the wire that we used to short here when we, when we were calculating the current must be removed. So if we short the cells and remove them, we remove the cells and put shorts, these resistors are no longer in series. These resistors are parallel. So to get Norton's resistance, we will calculate the parallel resistance of the circuit, which will be calculated by R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So this, remember, is 4 ohms and this one is 6 ohms. So once we get this parallel resistance of the circuit, it's equal to R naught on. So we come in and put it here. We know the load resistor that is 2 ohms. So 
Norton's law helps us to calculate the current across this resistor using a short method than if we were to calculate a current across this resistor using Kirchhoff's law. So how will we calculate a, a current across this resistor? Once we know this current and we know this resistance and we know this resistance, we can use the current rule which says current across L would be this resistor Rn divided by Rn plus Rl times that current, which is Norton's current. So once we get this current, this current here for this load resistor will be the current here, would be equal to the current here. So when it's equal to the current here, you know what it means. If we know the current here, we can then use this current. Uh, if we apply Kirchhoff's law here, and we say um, 24 is equal to, say we just assume that this loop is like that, then we would say it's the same direction, right? So we would say um, 2, if we say I2 here, I2 plus, if we say I1 there, um, 4, I1. So now I2 is no longer an I know, is, is no longer an unknown. So we just substitute I2, then we get I1. Without making the equations that Kishov's law of current would require us to use. So now that we know how to use Norton's law, let us use Norton's law to calculate the current across this resistor. So um, this requires to redraw the circuit since um, I have, it's no longer easy to see. So let's redraw the circuit. Where will we redraw the circuit? Let me redraw it here. So um, I, let me just pause so that this video will not be long for no apparent reason. So this is the circuit. Now let us um, convert this circuit to that circuit, which will have an amp meter. So we want to know the current. So the first thing is to calculate the current. If you want to, you can redraw the circuit like this. This is where the load resistor was. Put a bridge piece and you have this resistor and we have our cell here and we have everything connected there. We have our resistor, we have our cell again, and we connect here. So we know that we have 24 volts, 18 volts, 6 ohms, and 4 ohms. So if we want to know the current here, we said um, once we shot here, a current across this resistor would be determined by um, current across 6 ohm resistor is equal to 18 divided by 6. So this is 3 amps, right? And if we want the current across 4 ohms resistor, it's determined by 24 divided by 4, which is 24 divided by 4 um, is 6. 6 amperes. So if we want the current across here, we said I1 plus I2. If we said that one is I1 and this one is I2. So um, we said this is the same as In, which is the current that we are looking for there. In. So 6 plus 3, 3 plus 6 is equal to this makes IN equal to 9 amperes. So we know that we've got 9 
MPS here. But now we again need one more thing. Rn, Norton's resistance. So this will be connected in parallel with R R3. Oh yeah, let's say R3, which is two ohms. Um for us to calculate that, the rule says um, we must short the cells. So we had a cell here, so we put a short, the resistor remain. They said we must replace that short wire with the open circuit. So we had a cell here, we put a short. So with the cells here, these resistors are in series. Even with one cell, these resistors will be in series. 4 ohms and 6 ohms. But once we short, these resistors are no longer in series. They are parallel. That is why I said we will use this formula to calculate the, pala, the total resistance or the, the resistance across this parallel circuit. So we said um, this RP is the same as RN. So our RN would be determined by six times uh, four divided by six plus four. And this is equal to um, six times four divided by six plus four, which is 10. This is equal to 2,4. This is equal to 2,4 ohms. So now we know the resistance here that is 2,4 ohms. Can we calculate the current across R2 now? I mean across R3. Yes, we can calculate it by saying um, the current across um sorry two ohms which is that resistor or r3 if you want to represent it by r3 is i don't know why we said r3 we were supposed to say r2 but it's not a problem it's going to be calculated using the current rule right so the current rule says we must take 2,4 on top 2,4 plus 2 ohms times the total current which is 9 so what will be the answer 2,4 divided by 2,4 plus 2 times 9 so our answer would be 4,909 MPS so that's the current across this resistor Remember, these currents are not the currents across this resistor because they were not calculated on the original circuit. They were calculated on this circuit that we made for ourselves following Norton's rule. And also, um, this Rn is not the total resistance of the original circuit, but the total resistance of this circuit only, not even the total resistance of this circuit. So you must take note of the things that are irrelevant to the original circuit, but the, the current across that resistor, which is two ohms, which you got here, is relevant because it's the, it's the current across this resistor. So this rule works, I've proven it um, in a lot of um, circuits. So that is it for Norton's theorem.